Konnichiwa, Matt Watson here, reporting to you live from the 2019 Frankfurt Motor Show with an A to Z roundup video of all the latest models here, just for you, Kowau, Japan. Here we have the Alpina B3 Touring Allrad. Now, a bit later on, I'll show you the new BMW 3 Series Touring in standard form, but here's the Alpina version. So this uses the M3 engine, not 60, under four seconds. It's also got, obviously, X-Drive for added traction. Also, it's got some Alpina wheels, Alpina grille, and inside, they've reworked it slightly to make it feel a little bit more luxurious. Here on the Audi stand, there are absolutely shed loads of new cars. We're gonna start with this. Now, you know the drill by now, people. So it's jacked up slightly. It's got some extra cladding to make it look a bit tougher. And in terms of engines, we're talking diesel only. Yes, it's the SUV for people who don't like SUVs. Next up, we have a proper SUV rather than a jacked up estate car. Well, actually, it's not really much of a proper SUV. It's more of an inflated hatchback. It's the Q3 Sportback. So you've got a sloping roof line compared to the normal Q3. So it's a little bit more sporty. That guy is in a serious hurry. I think he needs the loop. And does that affect rear passenger space? Well, come on. I think it looks cooler on the outside. On the inside, it's, it's a little bit tighter for headroom, but you could live with that. This is the facelifted Q7, so it now has a grille similar to the Q8. More importantly though, it's also got the Q8 interior, so it now feels much more up to date. Now we come to Audi's four autonomous concept cars, which allow you to sit back and relax, and let the car do the driving for you. Now they all have AI in their name, so there's the AI-Con, which is for long distance stuff. You basically get in it and it'll drive you up the motorway, you don't have to do anything, super relaxing, super luxurious. Then there's the AI Me, which is a little city run around. Then there's the AI Race, which is a super sports car. Now these cars have all been revealed before, but what's new today is the AI Trail, which is some hardcore off-roader, which also has some autonomous tech. This is the new S5 Coupe. No longer is it a three litre V6 turbo petrol. It's a three litre diesel. 350 horsepower though. However, kind of leaving me cold. What's not though is this, the new RS7. So it has a turbo petrol, a four litre twin turbo V8 for that matter, 600 horsepower, top speed of up to 190 miles an hour. But I still wouldn't have this because if you're after this engine, you're better off having it in the RS6 Avance. Look at it. This is super cool, love it with the wide wheel arches the estate body line, it's better, isn't it? So here we have the new BMW M8, and it's the competition. So 4.4 litre, twin turbo, V8, 625 horsepower, 750 newton metres of torque, so a bit less than the Mercedes. Match the jacket to the car. Get out of it, go on, go back to your own channel, Henry. So yeah, it, it does match, and I do actually like this paintwork. It's a kind of matte, chromey blue. Looks super cool. Now I'm going to be driving this car very, very soon. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon, and I'll be doing a review of this wonderful M8. Here we have the new X6. This is not the best angle to be showing you really because the X6 is all about the rear end. So come on, cameraman, You're in the wrong place. Look, 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 look. This is what matters. You stand over there. God, having to direct it like this. See, this is what matters. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> just open the door into my arse. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. This is a motor show, people. This is what matters. The sloping roof line and how much space there is in the back. Hopefully I won't whack her on the arse. There we go. Thank you very much. Good timing. Let's see if there's space in the back. Come in here. <laughs> okay, come on, it's all across. What does that sloping roof line do for headroom? Oh, crap. It's very tight. I'm just about okay, but I don't know if you can see anything because it's very, very dark in here. Very dark. Speaking of which, here we have an X6 in a new paint called Vanta Black, and it's basically the darkest material known to man. It absorbs 99% of all light. It's pretty much like a black hole, so light can't escape from it, and you can only see the outlines of the car. It's totally insane. I think if I get too close, I may get sucked past the event horizon and then just turn into a whole stream of liquid plasma and never be seen again, so I'm not going to, but there you go, the darkest, BMW X6 in the world like ever. So here we have the 8 Series Grand Coupe. 8 Series up front, Coupe four door at the back. 8 Series normal Coupe is just absolutely cramped in the rear. So let's see what this is like. 
Come on in. Come and check it out with me. Yeah, well, anything's better than the normal 8 series. It's not exactly palatial, but it's all right. I could do quite a bit of distance in this. Nice. Here we have the BMW iHydrogen Next Fuel Cell Vehicle. So it's due out in 2022. It's powered by electric motors. The benefit of using hydrogen over a normal electrical system like charging batteries is that you can fully refuel this thing in four minutes. Yet it's still zero emissions. Sticking with the zero emission theme here on the BMW stand, we have the C Evolution scooter. So it's electric powered. It's got a range of about 100 miles. We can do 0 to 60 in around six seconds. Yeah, I prefer cars. A few moments later. All right, yeah, we're going to stick with two wheels for now with this, the BMW Vision DC Roadster. It's a concept motorbike. It's got like sticky out bits like the box engines that you get on normal BMW internal combustion engine bikes, but obviously they don't do anything. They're probably just batteries. So I imagine looking at this thing is going to be super, super quick and probably quite lethal at the same time but not for the environment, which is the main thing, because it's electric. Now, if you're a car reviewer that gets a lot of hate on YouTube, you might want one of these. It's an armored X5, so it's got protective glass. It's got sheet armor in the body panels as well, but it just looks like a normal X5. For instance, if I open the boot, you will see that it's only the passenger cell, which is armored. Now, this does all add weight. This thing can weigh up to three and a half tons. That's why it's powered by the 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 from the M850i. You can still do 0 to 60 in under six seconds. Now, I'll just demonstrate the armour. So I'll just get my gun. And if you look at the damage that I've done to the body panel, because it's all shattered, but none of my rounds have made it through. I mean, I was just using a Glock, but you can shoot this thing with an AK-47 and the occupants will still be fine. This, my friends, is the BMW M Vision Next. So it's effectively a hint of what the replacement for the i8 will be like. Now, unlike the i8, which was a little bit underwhelming in the old performance stakes, this one isn't. Still a petrol electric hybrid. You've got a four cylinder petrol engine this time, obviously a turbo, and electric power. And combined, you get 600 horsepower. So 0 to 60 in around three seconds, top speed, of 180 miles an hour, maybe a bit more. Who knows, it's just a concept for now. Finally then, we have the three series touring. So follow me around. This is the bit that matters. Back end of it, it's a three series, so it's gonna be good, but you've got the more practical estate rear end. Let's have a look in the boot. Come on, come on. There we go, power tailgate. And there we have a nice big load bait. Actually, I like what they've done here quite a bit of space. Brabus has the answer to a little problem I have. You see, I just don't find my G63 long term are powerful enough, you know. It's only got like 585 horsepower. Thankfully, this GV12900, as the name suggests, has 900 horsepower from its 6.3 litre twin turbo V12. It's also got 1500 newton meters of torque that they've had to limit it to 1200 meters because otherwise it'll just tear its tires to pieces. Yeah, it's an insane vehicle, and as well as the upgraded engine, it has some upgraded body panels and interior as well. Doesn't come cheap though. If you want one of these, £700,000. Oh, and only 10 will be made. Here on the Byton stand, which is a Chinese manufacturer, is the M Byte electric SUV. Now it looks a bit like a concept car, but it turns out this is fully production ready. Oh, yes. Now, apparently, from its electric motors, it generates. 470 horsepower and has a range of 300 miles. It's unbelievable. And someone's told me that it's going to start from around 35,000 pounds, but I can't believe that with those performance figures and the range, it will be that cheap. Who knows? It's going to go on sale in China soon, and maybe we could get it in Europe too. Unfortunately, Byton didn't allow me on the stand to show you inside their new car, but they have got a cutaway here of the dash. That's a 48 inch widescreen display. Welcome to the Cupra stand. That's actually something I've never said before. Though it is eerily close to the Seat stand for some reason. Can't think why. Anyway, they've got this concept car. It's called the Tavascan, which sounds a bit like an indigestion tablet. You know, oh, you know, it's a terrible curry. Pass us the Tavascan. Actually, this thing, it's electric powered, two electric motors, 300 horsepower, 77 kilowatt hour battery, 0 to 60 in about six seconds, and it has a range of 280 miles. Cooper is also showing off a special edition version of its Ateca. Same engine, 
two litre turbo, 300 horsepower, same transmission, seven speed dual clutch, same everything apart from some extra bits of trim. And importantly, look, a really nice, a crap of itch exhaust. It's gonna be loud. Let's have a little break from cars and talk about cycles. So I'm on the Bridgestone stand. And they have a new tyre for bikes, look. So it's a solid tyre, but with these vents here, which effectively act as suspension. So you don't need to inflate the tyre, so you won't ever have punctures. Great for riding around town. The only problem is, is that we can't actually have these tyres yet in Europe because they've got to be homologated. They have them in Asia. We're just a little bit behind, as per usual. Anyway, on with the cars. Here on the Ford stand, we have the new Cougar SUV, which I'm not that keen on the look of, to tell you the truth. However, I do like the new Puma small SUV. It's kind of quirky, a bit interesting. Then over there is a seven-seater SUV, the Explorer, all new, but we won't be getting it in the UK. Some European countries will, and the US will obviously take it. Now, over there in the distance, there's a bunch of current Ford cars which are electrified in some way. So they're either mild hybrids, normal hybrids, or plug-in hybrids. And that's your lot on the Ford stand. Here on the Honda stand, the little E is drawing a lot of attention. People are just buzzing around it. So it's Honda's little electric city car. And it's super cute, isn't it? I really do like the look of it. It's pretty cool in white. It's all right, mate, don't you worry. <laughs> it's even better in bright yellow. And I would have one in that gray. It's really, really nice. So this thing has a 150 horsepower motor. It can do about 90 miles an hour. Yeah. It's not that fast, but it's, it's fast enough. And you can charge it from empty to 80% full in just 30 minutes. And I'm going to get photobombed. Oh, it happened. I knew it was going to happen. But like I said, this car is drawing a lot of attention. Anyway, let's check it out on the inside. I fucking love the interior design of this little thing. I've never seen so many screens. I mean, it's kind of like the Mercedes A-Class, but they've added an extra screen beyond that. It's super, super cool. And you've got a little bit of wood trim here and here, and it feels... Pretty nice. And look, a bit like the Audi e-tron, but actually better positioned. You've got rear view cameras instead of door mirrors. I think Honda's done a cracking little job on this thing. Oh yes, I think I actually want to buy one myself. Should I buy one? Let me know in the comments below. I'm quite surprised how much room there is in the back of this thing. Look, this guy sat next to me and he's totally man-spreading, but I'm, I'm, I'm still fine, I'm not complaining. Knee room's good, head room's good. What's not to like, eh? So here's the engine bay, sorry, motor bay for the new Honda E, with all the workings in there, and your charging points here. Oh my God, that's so complicated. There's gonna be no car DIY maintenance in the future, is there? We're gonna start with the sensible here on the high and die stand, and then things are gonna get more and more ridiculous. So yeah, the sensible. The new i10, so it's lower, wider, a bit more spacious than the old car. It's got cooler, more modern design, a big infotainment system inside, but it's still very, very good value for money. And you can get it with two engines. There's a one litre and a 1.2 petrol. Ooh, lovely. You can also get a super economical version with a high ratio gearbox for cruising super efficiently down the motorway. This is the Hyundai Nexo, so it's a fuel cell car. It has 160 horsepower from its electric motor, and you can actually fill it up with hydrogen in just five minutes, and that'll give you a range of 666 kilometers. So that's the number of the beast. The price is quite beastly as well, 62,000 pounds. Though actually inside, it does feel quite premium. Two huge infotainment displays, lots of space. So yeah, if you want to go zero emissions, but be able to travel a long distance, hydrogen fuel cells are the way to go. Motor shows are all about timing, and on this occasion, my timing was off. Underneath here is a car that was previously uncovered, and now it's covered. It's called the Veloster N-E-T-C-R, and it's basically Honda's first electric race car. It's got a mid-mounted motor, drives the rear wheels, it can do 0-60 in three seconds, tops out at 170, but its range is only 25 miles because obviously you're gonna be thraping it. Yeah, it's gonna race in a special electric car racing series. Finally, we come to the most insane car on the Hyundai stand. I say car, it's not really a car, it's more of a pointy shape. It's supposed to signify the car of the future, so it's fully autonomous, and it's called the H-Space, and it can project different things on its glass. It's, it's all super cool. The way up, look, it's, 
It's been unveiled. Ooh. Yeah, I don't really know either, but it's kind of cool. Here on the Hong Kui stand, actually, you don't pronounce it like that. I think it should be Hong Ti. Now, the Chinese viewers will know if that's right or wrong. Anyway, we have an electric SUV, which is world premiering here today. And it's kind of like a cross between a Range Rover, a BMW at the front, and a sort of Mansori as well. Eventually, that's going to go into production, apparently. It's all electric. Now, over here is something a bit more interesting. So, we have a sports car. Actually, it's more of a supercar. It's a petrol-electric hybrid, uses electric motors and a V8, not 60, in just 1.9 seconds. It's top speed of over 250 miles an hour. That's insane. Front looks a little bit like a McLaren Senna, though. Cross with a P1. Interesting. Very interesting. The only new car on the Jaguar stand is this facelifted XE. Now, there's some minor exterior cosmetic tweaks where the biggest differences are here on the inside. So you've got a new infotainment system. It's slightly lower as well. You've also got the infotainment system down here. It extends for controlling the climate control and stuff like that. You've also got a digital driver's display. And instead of the pop-up knob, you've got a normal kind of gear selector, which is just a little less fun. Oh, and in future, you're going to be able to get this car with 48-volt mild hybrid technology. And that's about it, really. There are quite a lot of manufacturers missing from this show, so no Peugeot, Ferrari, nor Volvo. Also, Kia have been pretty cunning, so you can imagine them having the discussion, you know, like, oh, we don't want to spend on a full stand. Oh, no, f*** it. Let's just stick our new Exceed in a box outside the show, save some money, winner. Here on the Land Rover stand, there is literally nothing new apart from a facelifted version of the Discovery Sport. Oh yeah, of course, there's the new Defender. Yeah, there's quite a few, actually. So you've got a long wheelbase version over there with an Expedition pack on its own roof rack and a raised air intake. We've got a Red Cross version there, which is completely basic, but it has some fresh water tanks on it as well. There's also some other versions of the 110 and further down, the 90 as well. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on the Defender here because I've got an in-depth video war crowned on that car. So click up there to go and watch it now. Yeah, go on, it's really good. Promise you. There's one key car on the Lamborghini stand and it's the new Sean. To everyone else, it's the Sian. So what is it? Well, it's a 6.5 litre mild hybrid supercar. So it has 820 horsepower from its 6.5 litre V12. That's boosted by 35 horsepower by an electric motor. Yeah, all wheel drive, of course. Seven speed, dual clutch automatic gearbox. Nord 60, 2.8 seconds. You've also got a top speed of 270 miles an hour. It is the most powerful and fastest accelerating Lambo ever done. Unsurprisingly, Mercedes is showing off quite a lot of new cars here at its home motor show. I'm going to start off with this, the Mercedes AMG GLB 35. So I think you can probably guess what's going on with this car. It's got that two litre turbocharged petrol engine with 306 horsepower and 400 newton metres of torque. Obviously four wheel drive as well. Automatic gearbox should be fairly rapid. Not quite as rapid as the A35, which is obviously lighter. It's going to be more expensive though. £45,000 when it goes on sale later this year. And you know what? If I was buying this, I would not go for this car. I don't think it suits it. You want some kind of grey. That Mercedes matte grey is awesome. So here we have the GLE Coupe. You know, how these things work. It's the same as the GLE from about here. Then you've got the sloping roof line to make it look more sporty. It means the Mercedes can charge extra for it. Yeah. Let's check out the space in the back. See what that sloping roof line does. Is it going to pass? Can it fit a Matt Watson in? Sat dead bolt upright with his silly long torso. Can it? Can it? Can it? Oh, it's tied, but it's just about a three finger pass. This may look like a normal GLE SUV, but oh no, it's not, because around the other side, there's another fuel filler cap, and it's got this little badge. EQ Power. Yes, it's the 350E hybrid. So you've got a two-litre diesel engine, an electric motor, and combined, you've got 320 horsepower. That means it's good for 0-60 in around 6.8 seconds. In fact, this thing has the largest battery Mercedes has ever fitted to a hybrid. As a result, it's got an electric-only range of 54 miles. Now, this Mercedes Maybach S560 isn't new here today, but I just want to show you this, how good the soundproofing is on this car. So, 
Yeah, don't hear anything. But if I open the door... And now peace and quiet again. So guys, this is the paint scheme. I reckon you should have that AMG GLB 35 in. Looks super cool. And this is the A-Class you should have. If you don't want a diesel, but you need good economy, because this is the new 250E plug-in hybrid. You've got a 1.3 litre turbocharged petrol engine combined with an electric motor. And that gives you 218 horsepower, so not 16, 6.6 .6 seconds, but you have an electric only range of around 50 miles, which means that when you combine that together, and if you're clever with plugging in and charging it, you might be able to do 200 miles per gallon out of this thing. This is the ESF safety concept. It's basically a test bed for Mercedes future safety tech, and it's based on a GLE, but it has features such as a retractable steering wheel and pedals. It's fully autonomous as well. It has a light in the sun visor, which when you put it on, mimics that of normal sunlight, so it increases your alertness. Then it has a digital display in its grill, and it also has a display in the back window. And it can use that to communicate with other road users to tell them what's going on. Finally then, we come to this, the EQS concept. So it's effectively an electric S-Class, although Mercedes aren't calling it that. More like a Tesla Model S rival. So it's four-wheel drive, two electric motors, it has 470 horsepower, a range of 435 miles, 0 60, four and a half seconds, top speed of 125 mile an hour. The coolest thing about it are the headlights. Whew, tell you what, motor shows are blooming knackering. I think I need to take a break. Oh, damn it, it's nailed down. Oh look, it's the Mini Electric. You can tell because it's got like electric effect trim with like an E badge on the front and yeah, it says Mini Electric here. So even an idiot like me can figure it out. What you need to know about this car is that it has 180 horsepower from its electric motor, a range of up to 270 kilometers and it can do 0 to 16 around seven seconds. And even though it's zero emissions, it's pretty much just a normal Mini. Welcome to the Opal stand, also known as the Vauxhall stand. Look. This car's even got a Vauxhall badge on it, bless them. Anyway, it's a new Corsa, and I think it looks quite cool. So, it's gonna be available with 1.2 litre engines, naturally aspirated petrol, turbo petrol, and a turbo diesel. Now, this isn't the only version they've got here, there's another one, and this is it, the E-Corsa. Actually, this is just its 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will give you a range of 330 kilometers. So this is the Ecos actually, and it looks like the normal Corsa, but they've added some extra trinkets to make it look a bit more upmarket and expensive because it is more expensive. This thing's going to start from £32,000. Still, it does have 140 horsepower, did not 60 in eight seconds, and of course you feel smug because you're emitting absolutely nothing because there's no tailpipe. Opel is also showing off the facelifted Astra. Now this is the hatch version, so they've done some subtle styling tweaks, improved the aero for improved efficiency. They've also tried to make it feel a little bit more upmarket inside and retune the suspension for added comfort. And over here, they've done the same thing with this, which is obviously the estate version. And that's all I have to say on the matter. Oh, look at this. It's an old Corsa GT from the 1980s. I think it makes me want to jump in it and go joyriding. So this little thing, it's only got a 1.3 litre engine with 70 horsepower, but because it only weighs 800 kilos, it's actually quite nippy. Though you won't want to crash in it because it's so flimsy, you'd end up dead. New cars are way, way safer. You kind of forget that, really. Porsche is showing off its new Taycan here in Frankfurt. And here we have the turbo, which of course isn't a turbo, because it's electric. This has 680 horsepower, a range of 280 miles. That's a little bit too slow for you. We have the Turbo S over here in white. So this has 760 horsepower, getting 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. It's not a turbo either. It's not even an S. Don't know why they did that. Here in the back seats of the Taycan, it's got enough room, but it doesn't feel as spacious as a Panamera. This back seat actually is quite upright. Yeah, better than 911, obviously. It's really insightful journalism, isn't it, here? Yeah? Uh, let's see if we can step it up for the front of the car once these guys disappear. Oof. So here in the front of the Taycan, it feels suitably high-tech. I do like the way that they've kind of got traditional Porsche look to the dials, the way it's concave, but it's fully digital, and you've got an infotainment screen there as well, and 
controls here, which are all touchpad, a bit like an iPad, really. I've been walking around this confusing place for ages, trying to find bloody Renault. Can't find them anywhere. I wanted to show you the new Capture plug-in hybrid. Here's a picture of what it looks like. I would need this video to be complete, but anyway, I'm going to leave you with another Brabus to make do. They're very similar. This is the Ramsmobile Protoss, and it's a strange looking car. In fact, it's a bespoke armoured vehicle, though it only weighs 1.8 tonnes because its armour is actually made from carbon fibre, Kevlar and titanium. Now, this thing can actually stop a 7.62 round. It's armour piercing, yet being lightweight, you can make a fast getaway, especially as under the bonnet is a 6.5 litre supercharged V8. Hell yeah. The big news for Smart here at the Frankfurt Motor Show is the fact that the entire range, look up there, as you can see, has gone all electric. So that means the 4.2, the 4.4, and this masculine of masculine cars, the 4.2 Cabriolet. The only thing you need to know about on the set stand is this, a plug-in hybrid version of the Turaco. 1.4 litre turbo petrol, combined with electric motor, 245 horsepower, FYI. I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys. There's not much that's interesting on the Skoda stand. Perhaps the most exciting thing is this. The new Superb in combi form. Though it is a plug-in hybrid, look. Woohoo! look, look at that. You can plug it in there. So it's got 1.4 litre turbo petrol, normally 150 horsepower, but then it's boosted by an electric motor for 220 horsepower. You can drive for up to 30 miles on electric power alone. I'm going to show you some other stuff, which is even less exciting. Next we have this, an electric version of the Citigo for the first time, so it's pretty much the same underneath the skin as the Volkswagen e -up. Range, 165 miles. Finally, there's Monte Carlo versions of the Kamiq and the Scala. Look, they're red in colour and they have a badge that says Monte Carlo. Actually, I'm being quite disingenuous to Skoda. I think they make great cars, especially like the Karok. Yeah, a bit of balance for you. Oh man, I need to take another break. <sighs> Not again. All right, everybody, we're almost at the end. We're here at the Volkswagen stand with this, the revised E up. So they've increased the range to 162 miles. Yay, party on, amazing. That's not the big news here, really. It's actually up there, another electric car. One that's all new. Oof. Well, here it is then, finally, the ID3. It is Volkswagen's first ever built from the ground up all electric car. You can think of this as an electric Golf. Actually, it's not Golf, it's its own unique model. There will not be an electric Golf anymore. Oh. But if you want a Golf side electric car, here we go, this is it. So, range, 340 miles. That's pretty blooming good. Not to 60, eight seconds. That's fairly nippy. And inside, it feels modern. Let's go check it out. Oof. I'm actually going to start off in the back seats because there's people in the front, but that's good because it shows you that even with someone sat in front of you, there's decent legroom in the back of this car. It feels roomy and because it's electric, there's no hump in the floor like you get with a Golf for the exhaust system or the transmission tunnel for the four wheel drive system on all four models. So yeah, all right, in the middle too. The seats are a little bit cheap feeling though. I think they're supposed to feel sort of recycled. Yeah. Also, that is cheap ass materials up there. Bit of a shame because the design is kind of cool. Headroom, headroom's all right for me. We need to check out the front though, so I'm gonna to need to get these guys out of it. Maybe if I do a sneaky fart, they'll wanna leave. <laughs> well, there you go, the old fart ploy worked. The guys have buggered off. So I can explain the interior design of this car. So it's sort of futuristic. You've got this big screen here and everything is like a touch sensitive button. So no press buttons, it's all swipey stuff. Even the sunroof, like you move the blind by swiping forwards or backwards like that. And over here as well, you can control the driver's display by swiping there through different views and going through different modes. Everything is swipey. To start the car, you toggle this lever here. Reminds me quite a bit of the BMW i3. Yeah, it's, it's not bad at all. And you've got voice commands as well. So you can say, hey, ID, I'm cold. An error has occurred. Brilliant. To start voice control again. Please press the push to talk button. Great. Awesome. Well done, Volkswagen. You've sorted that system. It's seamless. Nice. I'll tell you what, I'm not very impressed with either 
Once again, materials about the place, all a bit scratchy. This is a £30,000 car, and in places it doesn't really feel it, though it's nice and squidgy up there. Hmm, it's going to be interesting to drive it though. That's really what's going to matter, and whether it can do that range that it claims. Finally then, let's check out the boot. So, here we go. Look, it's an alright size, and there seems to be some kind of e-scooter called a city skater in there. Great for in Europe or Frankfurt, such as here, where people whiz around on e-scooters. Not in the UK, where they're actually illegal. Good old UK. The ID3 is the first of a range of all electric cars coming from Volkswagen. And there's some concepts down there which hint at what we can expect. So, oh look, a dune buggy, some form of MPV, less exciting, some SUV, which people will love obviously, but my favourite is an electric camper van and beyond that is some form of electric saloon, which is kind of a bit meh. Just one last car to show you, it's just beyond here. It just, just, go it's so cool. Way. Can I just go in there? No, no sorry, you have to this way. Oh no, so close, like the most exciting car at the entire show. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the roundup. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit that bell icon to turn your notifications on, so you're alerted when we make a new upload.